Hey everybody, welcome to Janome Free Motion Basics. My name is Kate Quinn, I'm an educator for Janome, and today I'm gonna share the key essential things that you need to do to set up your machine for free motion. Come and join me. So to start, I'm going to use the screwdriver and I'll loosen up the screw and remove the entire foot. Take this part all the way off. Keep the screw, you'll need that. Center your foot and use the screw to secure it right onto the bar. Okay, so I've got this lined up with the screw hole. I've got that started. I'll tighten that up, finger tight. Once I get that secured, make sure that you use the screwdriver and tighten it up all the way. Okay, we wanna make sure that that is secure. We're not ratcheting it down too tight to, draw, to um, damage the screw, but we wanna make sure that this is not moving at all. Now, let me show you real quick that when we installed this, the metal bar is on top of this screw post. So as the foot goes up, that screw post up here above the spring, when this comes up, it's going to pull up that spring. That's the spring action here that is lifting this up when we take stitches. So make sure that the little tip of this metal is above this screw plate right here, this little screw. That's how you'll make sure that that's installed properly. When we're setting up for free motion, it's important that we also select the needle that is appropriate. When we match up our needle, we don't just pick any old needle that will work for free motion. What's important is to determine what works with our thread. In general, when I'm using a 40 weight thread, that can be a cotton 40 weight or a polyester, I recommend a 9014 needle. One of the ones that I use most often is the Janome Purple Tip Needle. It works very well. If you don't have a Purple Tip Needle, another one that could be useful is a Top Stitch Needle. This is the 9014 Top Stitch Needle. And with the titanium coating, they'll last a long time. They work really well. And another option can be to use a 9014 and a needle that is labeled as a quilting needle. All of these types of needles work really well for penetrating all the layers of quilting, and so they give you good performance. So make sure that you install one of those styles of needles. If you're using threads that are thinner, like a 60 weight thread or an 80 weight thread, you can use the same styles of needles but you may perhaps choose a needle that is a little smaller. A 9014 is fairly good size. An 8012 is smaller. A 7511 will be even smaller. So make sure that your needle matches the thread that you are using. So if you have a straight stitch plate for your machine, that is great to use for free motion. If your needle is in the center, with your free motion foot and you have a straight stitch plate, I also recommend going ahead and installing that as well. That will give you better stitches. I want to show you real quickly something else that can be really useful when you're doing free motion. Let's just pan out quickly. So I have just the um, extra support here on my machine. This is a little storage tray, but I'm gonna take it off. I wanna put the larger extension that comes with my machine onto the machine for free motion. It gives me a lot more support for my quilting project and a lot more room. So if you have an extension table, absolutely make sure that you are using that with free motion. You definitely want to install that. The last setup tip that I wanna tell you about is, right now I have reached behind my machine and I have set my selector switch so that my feed dogs will be in the down position. So right now, my feed dogs 
they're below the edge right here. If I feel this with my finger, I do not feel my feed dogs. So when you're doing free motion, I definitely recommend that you work with feed dogs down. That's the last setup for your machine. A quick review, knee lift if you have it, straight stitch plate if you have it, extension table if you have it. If you don't, those are optional things that will make things easier but are not required. You must set your machine feed dogs down and you need the free motion foot. There are many different feet options, but the free motion hopping foot is the most common one and they have them in both open and closed toe options. My machine is threaded normally and my feed dogs are down, so we are ready to free motion. Once your machine is completely set up and ready for free motion, it's important that you do a quick test. Nobody wants to sew their entire quilt project and turn it over and realize that their tension hasn't been good from the beginning. So I recommend making a small sandwich that uses many of the same fabrics that your quilt top is made out of and the same batting. When you start out for any free motion project, you wanna make sure that your thread is through the foot. If the foot is closed, you can bring the needle down and up and just pull this forward and that will allow the thread to go through the hole. Then if you pick up this thread right here, notice that picks up your bobbin thread. Basically, I just did needle down and up and I pulled that top thread to pull this bobbin thread up to the top. Always, always pull the bobbin thread to the top. You want to know what happens to that bobbin thread. If this long tail is underneath and you don't see it, you might end up stitching through it many times and then it's really unsightly and difficult to remove. So never forget, for each time that you start a stitch with free motion, bring your bobbin thread up to the top. You'll notice that I've put two different colors. I have yellow in the bobbin and I have a light purple in the top. For today, I done that intentionally because I want to show you how we can do a quick tension test to make sure that our tension is good. So quickly, I'm gonna lower my presser foot and I'm ready to sew. And when you're doing free motion, you have to move the quilt. If I don't move it, then nothing is going to happen, right? And that's really important for people to understand. The stitch length, I cannot set my machine for a certain stitch length. I can't change the numbers on the dial right there to say I want it to be two or three unless I have a regulator. My movement right now with the feed dogs down is what determines my stitch length. So if I were to go a lot faster, too fast, look at how much bigger these stitches are than these. But if I sew very slowly, and I'm just moving the same, but the machine is going kind of fast, what we'll end up with is very tiny, tiny stitches that don't look very good. So real quickly, I'm just gonna lift my needle and I'll pull the sandwich out. And we'll show you the difference. So this is when I first began, what I would consider to be looking fairly normal. These ones are not ugly or anything, but they're certainly larger than that. And then this is very, very tiny stitches right there. That means that I'm moving really slowly and the machine is going fast. So I want to give you a very quick tip on how to adjust your stitch length if you're doing free motion. I'm going to show you right now, come into the dial right up here, the screen that shows everything. We cannot adjust the stitch length, right? Free motion doesn't have a stitch length determined by the machine because the feed dogs are down. But if I set my machine to the middle speed and I'm always pressing the gas all the way down, the foot control will be all the way push down pedal to the metal, so to speak. And then if my stitches are big like this, then that means that the machine 
If I want them to be a little tighter, I need the machine to sew faster. So I would adjust this dial a little bit faster. That means the machine will take more stitches in the same amount of travel. If my stitches are really tiny like this, very tight together like that, then I need the machine to sew more slowly. So then I would adjust the dial here to be slower speed. And right away, as long as I don't change my own movement, that will affect the look of these stitches. So that, that's the key thing. If the stitches are large, we need the machine to go faster. And if the stitches are tiny, we need the machine to go slower. The key thing that you'll have to try to do and teach yourself is don't change your own movement. Your body already knows how fast it's comfortable moving. So it's really important to make the machine match you by adjusting that speed to adjust the look of your stitches. So that's our tip for stitch length and stitch performance. We also mentioned how to pull up the bobbin thread. Before we move on to actually quilting on our quilt, I'm gonna show you one more thing. When we do any quilting, we need a way of tying off of our stitches so that they don't pull out. So I'll go ahead and pull up this bobbin thread, set my needle right back down where it was, and as I'm stitching, when I start out, I'm going to do some very slow stitching right at the beginning. So maybe five or six stitches. Ready? Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And those are very small, but they are moving forward. And now I'll ramp up and I'm gonna push my, my speed control all the way down. Right now my foot is all the way down to the bottom. And if that is too slow for me, then I can move it up just a little bit. Okay, so here we go. And as I'm done with my line of stitching, let's say I'm finishing, I'm gonna slow down and one, two, three, four, five. And now I have some very, very small stitches at the end. That is gonna make sure that those stitches will not pull out. So I flip this over onto the back so that the yellow will offer a little bit more contrast. Those are my tiny stitches right there. And then I've done my quilting and kind of wiggled around. And then, as we said before, we've got some of these small stitches right here. So that's a way that you can tie off. If I'm going to stitch back to the beginning so that my end and my starting point will be at the same point, I will just tie off at the end only one time. Then you won't have as many stitches built up on the top. Now that we've talked about stitch length, let's talk about tension quickly so that you can have a good plan if your tension is not where you think it should be. This is the yellow, right? So this is my bobbin thread, and this is my purple. If I have the two colors that look very distinct and I don't see this purple on my yellow and I don't see yellow on my purple, that means my thread tension is pretty good. It's balanced. The knot between these two colors is tucked inside with the batting. On this machine, my tension dial is right here. And right now I'm at five. And this box tells me that that's within the normal settings, right? Four or five, like that, normal. So if I lower the tension pretty far down, I'm going to make it a lot lower. So right now it's between one and two. And let's just sew a little bit and show you what happens when we do that. As always, we will use the good practice of picking up our bobbin thread every time. We always want that bobbin thread on the top. And then I'll set my needle so it goes right down where I left off. And let's just sew in some little circles. You can see it's already giving us trouble. It does not like that tension. So it's a good sign. It didn't like that. It 
It definitely felt like this tension was so low that it couldn't actually sew. So I won't make it that low because I, I just want to be able to show you what it does look like when it has low tension, even if it will sew. So I'll bring it up just a little bit so it can sew more normally. Okay, so. So let's get our bobbin thread up to the top and all threads under the foot. Lower our foot and our needle. Okay, so let's sew a little bit. As we look at the stitches right now, they seem a little bit loose right there. Like I can kind of use my fingernail and just pluck them a little bit. Let's see how it looks on the back. See how it looks almost like a straight line and you're getting some eyelashing? When you see this, when you see your top thread on the bottom, that's the light purple right there. This is a sign that our tension, our top tension is too low. I need the top thread to pull more and work harder to give us a nice pretty stitch. This is not a nice pretty stitch. This is a sign that your tension is too low and you want to increase your top tension. Now, we already showed you what it looks like when it's good. It looks balanced, the stitches look nice, it sews beautifully. Now, let's show you what happens when the tension is too high. So I'm gonna put it up uh, six, maybe seven, and we'll see what happens when it does that. Just so I don't have any threads get caught, I'm always going to keep my workspace clean so that there is no thread getting wrapped around my foot. That's always a good practice for you, so make sure that you follow that and that will do well for you. Okay, lift that up. There's my bobbin thread. Get my needle in position and lower my foot. Okay, here we go. Now let's sew along a little bit and see what happens. So it's still not looking as good as we want it. I'm actually gonna bring it up even just a little bit more to this eight right here and nine, because when the tension is too high, a lot of times you'll see that it'll pull your bobbin thread all the way up to the top, such that maybe that yellow will be showing through. So that's why I use two different colors. So I wanted you to be able to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this right now. And I'll bring that up close to you so you can evaluate it. It's hard to see, but right in there, there is a tiny little dot of the yellow. Can you see that? So right there. And that's a sign that this top tension is way, way too high. You can see the yellow maybe a little bit more there as well. Any time that the thread is pulling the bobbin thread up to the top, that's when the top tension is too high. And you'll see that this looks kind of flat, right? This does not look like it has a nice stitch that's notably open in between each one. And that's when the top tension here is too high. This is your top tension thread. And I can see this yellow thread that's pulled up from the back. That is when the top tension is too high. If I can see my top thread on the bottom, the tension is too loose. And if I can see my bobbin thread on the top, it's too tight. When I can only see the back on the back and the top on the top, that's when it's balanced. And that's a sign that you're ready to just free motion 
at your heart's content. Okay, so that's our tension adjustment. So at this point, we have a larger quilt sandwich. Our machine is all set up. I have returned my tension back to its natural setting, which was five. That's where we started and it was looking good. We're pulling up our bobbin thread in order to sew. And we're gonna go ahead, sew those beginning stitches to secure our thread lines. Make sure your foot is in the down position. There's our start. And now, as you're moving, you just want to move smoothly. Try not to race your machine. Something that's a simple way to start is just some loopy loops. If you want to stop, try to stop in a nice position that is something you can pick back up. So if I'm in the middle of a curl, when I want to start again, I want to go ahead and keep moving in that nice smooth direction. And if I want to do some switchbacks, I can. I can use the foot as an echo guide. So there's a little curl and go backwards. The foot here can be used as a spacer to keep me a distance away if I want to use that as a visual spacer. Most people do not start out on their very most precious quilt and they start free motioning on that. It's important that you're working on something initially that's maybe a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller, something that you can get the motion and get the control. And gradually, as your skills get better and better, you'll be able to work on a larger piece. You can see that this is a, not a very large throat, but you can see that I can still move nicely. I can actually pinch extra fabric in here. I can actually fit quite a bit of fabric in here if I needed to. So when you're working with a large quilt, if you start in the middle and you quilt towards the outside, that will make sure that the half of the quilt is the largest amount of fabric that will be stuck in the harp at one time. So that's a good tip for domestic quilters to start in the middle and work towards the outside. I hope that you found this useful and helpful to getting you started and it answered a few questions for you. I encourage you to try different designs. Not all designs will come easily to every person. Find the designs that work for you and you don't have to be able to quilt anything in the world. You'll only have to be able to quilt designs that speak to you and that work for the projects that you want. So if you have a couple of good swirls and curls and wavy lines and maybe like a star or something, you know, simple like that, you can go ahead and quilt your own projects and be confident and feel good about them. You don't have to be a professional quilter to be able to free motion, but getting started is the important step to getting you on your way.